Like Sue, the the footage that I will never forget from the ABC Four Corners program was that footage towards the end of, of the black cow trembling uncontrollably as it watched other cows being killed and cut up in front of it. And there was the voiceover from the expert saying that uh, animals like sheep and cows do feel fear. And I thought to myself as I watched that footage, surely we can do better than this. We can do better yes. than this. Yes. When my parliamentary colleague uh, Janelle Saffin and I gave notice of motion in the caucus the next day, the government announced that it would ban the export of live cattle to the dozen or so abattoirs which had been outed and exposed by that footage. But uh, Janelle Saffin and I and others made it clear that we would proceed with our notice of motion because A, uh, there are something like a hundred other abattoirs in Indonesia and we could not be confident that those practices would not be going on at those other abattoirs and secondly, we saw uh, boats being loaded for export going off to Indonesia in the days after that and we could not assure the Australian people that those cattle would not be subjected to the same practices that we had seen on Four Corners. The Australian public demanded action. The Australian public did not want business as usual. And then the Australian government did act. It acted, it acted to suspend live cattle exports to Indonesia. And that suspension has done a power of good. It has brought about a flurry of activity on the part of the Indonesian government and on the part of the authorities and I believe that that activity will lead to an improvement in animal welfare standards. And I am very proud of the members of the Parliamentary Labor Party who stood up for decency in our treatment of animals, yes. in our treatment of sheep and cattle. But since then there has been pressure for a lifting of the suspension and that pressure has come from Liberal and National Party members each day moving notices of motion, they did it on Wednesday and Thursday, they've got another one in the Parliament on Monday demanding that the suspension be lifted. And I am very concerned that if the suspension is lifted we will see a return to the barbaric and outrageous practices that were exposed by the ABC Four Corners program. And so, and so I, I urge all of you to contact your members of parliament, contact Liberal and National Party members of parliament, but contact all members of parliament because we live in a hung parliament, both House of Representatives and Senate, and all, all members' views are important and contact all of them and say we do not want a return to live cattle exports to Indonesia. That <laughs> Tell them the jig is up on live exports. It is time to move to domestic processing. That is the future of the meat industry. Now, they may, if you, I suggest contact them by emails, contact them by phone, seek to visit them in person. They may raise objections with you. They may say that this is uh, inhumane to the cattle who are in Northern Australia, that they may starve. Let me tell you, this is not true. There are animal welfare standards in practice in Australia which make it illegal to starve cattle or simply turn them into the bush. So it is not true that there is some debacle now occurring or about to occur in Northern Australia. They may tell you that this is bad for the industry and that many jobs will, lost, will be lost. Let me tell you again, this is not true. There are abattoirs in Townsville, in Mackay, in Rockhampton, which have spare capacity and these animals can be fattened up and be part of the meat processing industry in Australia. As for the jobs, the fact is that 
since we moved in the direction of live exports there have been over 150 abattoirs closed in the past 30 years and some 40,000 jobs have been lost 1,000 jobs lost in the past year so that is where the job losses have occurred they may tell you that Indonesia will go elsewhere for its beef supplies again this is not this is not true Indonesia has put out feelers in relation to New Zealand New Zealand which to its credit has a ban on live exports of <laughs> New Zealand has said no the fact is that beef production in 2010 was down the year before so there is not some uh, way in which Indonesia can simply source beef elsewhere. In 2006, following similar revelations of animal cruelty in relation to exports to Egypt, the then Howard government banned live cattle exports to Egypt. That ban remained in place for three years. The sky did not fall in. Egypt was able to source meat from Australia, chilled beef. So it is, it is not true that Indonesia will go elsewhere. They, they may also tell you that this will give offence to Indonesia and damage the relationship. Let, let, me, let me observe that, in the first place, President Cecilio Bambang Udiono has ordered his Health Minister and Agriculture Minister to visit and inspect those Indonesian abattoirs. That is not a bad thing, that is a good thing. That is a step in the right direction. Furthermore, everything I have been told about halal killing is that it is not inconsistent with humane treatment of animals but in any but in any event religious convictions cannot be allowed to override our obligations to deal with animals in a in a decent and humane way uh, the, uh, the exclusive brethren would like the, uh, the government not to enforce its workplace relations laws because they think that conflicts with their religious obligations. But we don't do that. You are not allowed to have uh, multiple wives or multiple husbands as part of your religious convictions. So religious convictions do not get us out of our obligations to deal with animals yes. humanely. Finally, they may tell you that the domestic processing industry is not as lucrative or profitable as live exports. Now, it is my belief that this is not so. There have been studies done of this issue by uh, outfits like ASIL Tasman, which have said that processing meat in Australia adds value of the order of 20%, and it stands to reason that downstream processing value adding is better than simply the live export. But in any event, some things are more important than money. We the torture, misery and suffering of defenceless animals. In, way back in 1791, when Will, William Wilberforce introduced his anti-slavery bill, there was an MP in the British Parliament by the name of Colonel Tarleton who voted against this bill and argued against this bill on the grounds that it would annihilate an industry which employed over 5,000 sailors and 160 ships. Now, they rejected that argument 220 years ago and we should reject it again today. Thank you.